Okay, okay. Hi, Eighth Hour. I hope you're doing very well. I'm sorry if you're confused from yesterday, and for all those you weren't here, you'll probably be very, very, very confused. But fortunately, we have YouTube and we have videos. So let us begin. Look at this. Why is this more difficult than what we had yesterday? Yes, I've got two sides to it, and I have what else? Sine and cosine. Now, this is very difficult. We have to understand the relationship that exists between sine and cosine. What relationship exists between sine and cosine? As we, as we glance at this, we cannot solve an equation unless it is really implicitly written in terms of sine or cosine or tangent or something of that nature. It's not like you have a button on your calculator that inverses sine and cosine, right? I mean, it just doesn't work like that. So th this is uh, kind of challenging here, but let's look at it. Um, I, I'm not giving you any hints, okay? This is this is you. You face this problem. I uh, Do you want to write this thing in terms of sine or do you want to write it in terms of cosine? Sign. A good idea. Emma. That's a really good idea. Ultimately incorrect, but very good idea. <laughs> so sine squared, uh, it would have to be plus, and we can't have the five. But Emma, let's go down further that path. Somebody further that. She's on the right path. What, what, are, you, okay. what are you looking at? What do you see? try okay let's look right here now you, you got the larger sheet but let's look right here sine squares sine squared plus cosine squared is so therefore cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. It's right here. Okay? You just got to know where to find it. We go to work. Here it is. Do you see the substitution? Now, pause. Show me what's the sheet you're going to look at when you make the substitution. What are you looking at? Okay, so... Well, great. Okay, so okay, so I would be looking at that one. Okay, I would be looking at the seven one, the the chief one that we used, which is identical, you guys, to this one right here. But it's uh, you know, this is uh condensed into three. The one I gave you is written out in about you know forty different formulas. Now, I part of the reason why I have Miss Butte in here is to uh see if you guys are actually using this thing. It. Have you guys like color coded or done anything to your? Can you show her? So, but my, you know, my kind of my question was how many people actually had these out before we even started? Raise your hand if you had them out before we even said right now. So we maybe had about half. These, you guys, these are your lifelines. You have to. You have to be able to use these for the study guide and for the test. We're going to use them right now. So this is a substitution I make because I saw it on my sheet, and I go 5 sine squared of x minus parentheses 1 minus sine squared of x equals sine of x plus 1. So that looks messy. Let's clean it up. What do you want to do? Okay, so 5 sine squared of x minus 1 plus sine squared of x equals sine of x plus 1. Now what? Okay. We will combine, and I get... I'm going to subtract a sine of x, and I'm going to subtract 2. How's that? Let's do what Larry said. Okay, so if I'm so don't hey don't don't freak out when you see this. Remember, this is just a polynomial 
similar to 6x squared plus x minus 2, correct? So the question is, can you factor that? No, 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 this is, this is, no, 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 this is survival. So if you got to use the AC method to get it done, then that's what you do. You can always plug that into the quadratic formula too and figure out your roots and solve from there, which is what we will practice in a little while. So let's, uh, let's go into here. How's this factor then? Oh, hold on, hold on. So I've got a plus one and a minus two. Okay, pause, pause, what? Okay, when I, if I check the inside outside, I've got to come up with a negative sign of X. Here I've got a negative four, here I've got a positive three that makes the negative sign. So, but hold on, you guys. What, do you know how to solve it here? We we built on that yesterday. The question is, guys, this is the que this is the whole point. Would you know how to start? I'm not. I can't tell you where to start every time. I can do a few examples, but where's your starting point? Your starting points are here. We got to know the type of substitution to use. Now I know that this looks absurd and ridiculous, but that's the nature of it. Okay, so. I chose to use one of the chief substitutions, right? I'm not going to try to, you know, I'm not going to try to use something ridiculous on you on the test, but I'm just saying we at least got to know our chief sub substitutions and make a go of it. Let's solve this thing off and show Miss Butte how smart we really are. All right, so what do we do now? Equal them to the zero. Three sine of x minus two is equal to zero. Two sine of x plus one equals zero now what sine of x is equal to two-thirds sine of x is equal to negative one-half a for the day who could tell me how many solutions I'm gonna have with this problem I will have four which quadrants good which quadrants here first and second draw my reference angles here, <clears throat> you're right, you do have your 3 and your 4. Do I draw my reference angles between the terminal side on the x-axis and the terminal side on the y-axis? X-axis. Can somebody please, inverse, 2 thirds, let's solve in degrees. 41 point, 41.81. Thank you, Stewie. Very good. And uh, 1 half, we should know that by memory. 30. So my solutions for x here are very good. So I'm 30 past 180, which is 210 degrees. I'm 30 behind of 360, which is 330 degrees. Those are two of my solutions. I go back here, and I have x is equal to 41.81 degrees, and then I am 41.81 back, which is 38.19. There I have four solutions. Can't ask a lot of questions like that on the test, right? Because otherwise it will take forever. So. That's that's where you're at. It's a big test, anyways. Yes, I might. We might go two days off to give us some thought. I, uh, Me you guys, Megan has a really good question. She said, "Do we have to use the power reducing formulas for this?" Um, I'm not. I'm not going to make you use the power reducing formulas for this. But can you? Yes. And would you down in calculus? Yes. Okay, let's try this one. 3 sine of 4x equals 4 cosine of 4x. 
try three examples today. Here's your second one. Thank you. You don't have any substitution here. Okay, we could solve for sine. Um, no. What? Oh, <laughs> you're, you had a good idea there at first, but no. Sorry. Good. You do have a double angle formula, but ultimately they will be useless in this scenario. Watch right here. Don't worry about the 4x. Are they both 4x? If they're both 4x, don't worry about it. They might as well both be x. It doesn't matter so long as the inside is the same. Focus on the outside. We have a sine and we have a cosine. And look at this right here. Most basic one that we've got. Tangent is equal to sine divided by cosine. Do you see it? You don't. You could try using your double angle one and ultimately you're not going to get it to work out. So what I'm doing is I'm just exposing you to this problem and saying when you see a sine and a cosine and you can divide it off. We go like that. What is negative 3 times sine of 4x over cosine of 4x? Good. Negative 3 tangent of 4x equals... Now divide by Now, everybody hold on here, okay? There's a trick. Because now we got a 4x. How do you handle that 4x? Well, first of all, where is tangent negative? Second and the fourth. Okay, but what we want to get at is the 4x, right? Very good. Very good. Let's inverse 4 thirds. Inverse 4 thirds. What do you get for tangent? 53.1, 53.1. Okay? So, we set this up. Instead instead of saying x equals whatever those two angles are, we have 4x equals 4x equals whatever those two angles are. So, if I go 53.1 back of 180, I get 126.9. Right? Right? If I go 53.1 back to 360, I've got one or a 306.9. So I've solved for that portion, but now I have a 4x. I divide by. Stewie, what do I got? 75. And 306.9 divided by 4. There you go. How do you like that trick? Can't forget about the 4x. Okay, let's try one more.
And you guys, there's there's lots of tricks to the trade here. There's there's lots of tricks to the trade. Yep. This this was some of my favorite stuff because it wasn't the same every time. You could come up with so many different ways of writing these problems. They're like they're like all different puzzles and it's just exciting. So what? No, 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 no. No, when you don't get it, I don't get bored. When you don't get it, that's like that's a that's the challenge. Like if I could get people to understand these problems, that's really exciting. However, sometimes I I don't get frustrated with you. I get frustrated with myself. It's like, gosh, why can't I get them to get this? And uh, you know, sometimes you realize just some of the diff some of the material is difficult. Alex, good try, but that doesn't work unless it's set equal to zero. It doesn't factor. Very good. Whoops, uh, you guys. I'm sorry. We're gonna we're gonna write this as as positive three. I I'm sorry. I wrote the problem wrong when I put it on the board. Our minus three is equal to zero. So it, it does not factor. So what we have to do is use the quadratic formula. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to solve for this. Okay. Watch, watch. This is very important because this is actually what you're doing. And, and you might skip this step in your brain, and that's fine. But I'm going to make a substitution. Cotangent of x is equal to u. Now I'm going to substitute u for cotangent of x. So what's my new equation then? 5u squared plus u minus 3 equals 0. So let's solve for u using the quadratic formula in your calculator. Your quadratic formula program. You don't have it, so you would have to use the quadratic formula, work it all the way out, come out with two decimals. So, here's what I got. I've got negative 0.88 and positive 0.68. That's what I have. Everybody okay with that? If you don't have your graphing calculator with that formula in there, then you got to do it by hand, or you're going to have to put the formula in there. So I solved for u. I didn't solve for x, so what do I do now? u is, so cotangent of x is equal to negative 0.88, and cotangent of x is equal to 0.68. Do you have a cotangent button on your calculator? No, so we need to rewrite this. Tangent of x is equal to, you do have a reciprocal button on your calculator. It's that negative 1 power thing. What's uh, negative 0.88 to the negative 1? What's well, like uh, you know, 88 over 100, so 100 over 88. You guys have questions eighth hour is too I'll pull it up I know I I, <laughs> I put it all in a folder for Brenda <laughs> I, Miss Nelson I was I was uh, I had some stuff for her when she needed a sub one time and I never really use that folder so I quit just yesterday because I needed to clean up my desktop. I just threw it all in there. So. <laughs> Anybody have a, a junk drawer at home? Like, you know, you just throw it so that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. So, if you want to inverse that second... I'm sorry. We just go negative 0.88, and then you press that X inverse button, negative 1 power, and you can see you get the negative uh, 1.13. So, 
All right, so let's do the other one. Uh, so we've got tangent of x is equal to, what's this one? Inverse of 0.68. One point four seven. So the question is, where is tangent negative, and where is it positive? It's positive in the first and the third. It's negative in the second and the fourth. So I will inverse. And again, I don't inverse the negative. I just inverse uh, tangent of one point or one point one three degrees. Anybody? 48.49. And then, um, how about the other one? 55.77. So now I can write my angles. I've got x is equal to and I've got uh, 55.77. So now, you know, sometimes it's nice to write them in, like, ascending order. So, like, 55.77 would be first, and then this one over here in the second quadrant would be next. 131.26. And then this one would be 235.77. Then this one would be and there you have it sure close enough okay so what I did is between yesterday and today, I picked out some easy problems. Easy. I picked out some challenging problems, and as opposed to you trying to uh, do them all and scratch your head through them, I, I picked a larger number and said, see if there's four that you think you could do out of that. What? So, um, I know that you guys are busy this weekend with prom. So, I will tell you right now that on Monday, you will have a work day. And I will get you the study guide right away on Monday for Thursday. And that's where we'll be. Any questions? Zach. Let me let me check with her. 